with that. That is pamara, instinctive, uncultured, literally. Then, little better than that, vishayi, a worldly person, dharmika vishayi, worldly person. Then, sadhaka, a spiritual practitioner. And then, siddha, person who is enlightened. What does the pamara want? Pleasure and wealth. Kama and artha. Pamara means, at this, you don't have to teach such a person. That person, we are born with those instincts. And just, I want to satisfy my instincts. But those are natural instincts. Those are biological instincts, psychological instincts. If I pursue that without respect for anything else, then what is Shubha for me? Not Gita class. For such a person, uh, for such a person, Gita class will be Ashubha. What a boring waste of time. Awful. I have a free evening, uh, Saturday. You want me to go to a terrible lecture? Ashubha. What is Shubha? I'll go and party. Go out to town, town and have a good time. That is Shubha. And this is Ashubha for a Palmer. For uh, a sadhaka, this is Shubha, that is Ashubha. I remember, I have not shared this, as a kid, when I made that transition, I used to get a little bit of pocket money from my parents. In those days, I was a bookworm, and those Superman, Batman comics used to come from USA, they were expensive because of the exchange rate. At that time, dollar was 5 rupees, I think, now it's 80. So, I would go <coughs> to buy Superman, Batman comics. One day, I felt... Why waste my mo this money on this? I will go to the Ramakrish local Ramakrishna mission and buy a book from the bookshop. See the transition from Shubha and Ashubha. My whole idea of Shubha and Ashubha went into a like, completely 180 degrees opposite. So Sadhaka considers this to be Shubha and that to be Ashubha. But what about the Vishayi, the one in between? The Vishayi Dharmika person understands this to be Shubha but is pulled towards the Ashubha. It's pulled like this. And remember, these are not cut and dried categories, it's a spectrum. In this spectrum, some are Pamara, some are Vishayi, and there's a broad spectrum. Some are Sadhakas, we are all Sadhakas, but Sadhaka also is a spectrum. Siddha is gone, Shubha, Shubha, Parityagi has gone beyond Shubha and Ashubha. The Siddha, the enlightened one. So, four categories Pamara, Shubha means material pleasure and sense pleasure, Ashubha means anything else, boring. Then um, the sadhaka, shubha means spiritual, moral, ethical, spiritual life is shubha. Ashubha means uh, all that diverts me away from this. Vishayi understands the shubha, wants the ashubha, pulled. And siddha, the enlightened one, beyond shubha and ashubha. Krishna says, shubha, shubha, parityagi. Beautiful example. How one can one give up shubha and ashubha? It's because of this. A classic Vedantic example. Snake rope, we all know. You will be thinking, at what point will you bring out the snake rope? <laughs> so the classic example, the full example is like this. There's a rope, uh, there was a rope, but people did not know it was a rope. Some people thought as they were passing it, they thought it was a snake. Some people thought, no, no, it's not a snake. It's a garland discarded from the temple. Temple garland, somebody has thrown it up, it looks, it's, it's there. Somebody thought it's a garland, Shubha. Temple garland, Shubha. Somebody thought it's a snake, Ashubha. Both are in delusion. The enlightened one knows it's a rope, not Shubha, not Ashubha. The enlightened one knows it is Brahman, one existence consciousness place. What we consider to be Shubha, what we consider to be Ashubha, both are appearances of one underlying reality. And the one who sees this, Shubha, Ashubha, Parityagi. But that comes from the vision of Brahman. Once there was a sadhu who came to Dakshinesh, where Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa was there. So this Hridaya, the nephew of Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa said that sadhu who looks like a crazy person, everybody thought he's mad, he's an enlightened person. So this, uh, his nephew thought, oh, I must get some advice. So he ran after that sadhu. And that sadhu was throwing stones to scare him off. But he ran further and he caught hold of that crazy sadhu and said, give me some advice. It's the temple is on the bank of the Ganga. So he said, when the water of the Ganga and the water of the drain are same to you, then you have attained enlightenment. Shubha or Shubha. But underlying both, there is one reality and that is what you are, that one existence, consciousness, bliss. And all of this requires a certain practice. Krishna men mentions it. It's a simple practice, not glamorous, not yogic, not advaitic. In the next verse Krishna says, Yada sangharate chayam kurmangani vabharata indriyani indriyarthebhya tasya prajna pratishthita Sense control. This con our senses are autonomous. They have a certain amount of independence and they have a lot of energy, like teja. 
and they are rushing out to their objects. Eyes want to see, ears want to hear, fingers want to touch, nose wants to smell, the tongue wants to taste. I must retain control over it. Ancient idea in um, uh, Katopanishad. If you want to become enlightened, Yama tells Nachiketa, think of this body-mind as a chariot. And you are the Atman. And the chariot, there are five horses pulling the chariot along. And these horses must be trained. The mind is the reins by which the horses are controlled. The buddhi, the intellect, which is understanding all of this, hopefully, that is the charioteer, the driver. You are the witness consciousness, the passenger. Now, first thing is, the horses must be well trained. They must be responsive to the commands. These well trained horses, Krishna says, like a tortoise can withdraw its limbs. You must have the ability of withdrawing the senses. You can send the senses forth to action in the world. You can withdraw the senses forth. It, the world should not cling to you. The senses should not cling to the world. That's what happens to us when we say, I understand. Somebody says something nasty to me. I forget I am Brahman. I forget he is Brahman and give him a nice one back. So these practices are necessary for establishing wisdom, sthita pragya. Again, I'm sharing things which are sort of among the monks in the Himalayas. They give five reasons why these advanced practices are necessary. Five reasons. Ultimate reason is two. Dukkha nivritti, ananda prapti. Our sorrows will actually cease and you will get bliss for that reason. And three preliminary reasons they give. One is called jnana raksha. I have understood all this. But I have to nurture it and protect it. Sri Ramakrishna would say, when the sapling is new, a fence is put around it. Otherwise, cows and goats will come and eat it. So a fence is put around it. Fence is spiritual practice. That fence, that's why we need to have jnana raksha, to protect this knowledge. Isha Upanishad says, tena tena bhunjitha. By renunciation, protect this knowledge that isha vasyam idam sarvam. One consciousness pervades this entire universe. And you are that consciousness. But you protect it by renunciation. By spiritual practice. Jnana Raksha, first reason. Second reason is, Tapasya, uh, uh, austere spiritual lifestyle is required. It strengthens us. Strengthens us in controlling the senses. See this thing, that I understand everything, but somebody says something and I lash out at that person, unable to control. The senses are not under control. There is a physical pain. I burst out, I scream and shout. Oh! I understand. I am the witness of the body. I am the witness of the pain also. But at that moment, I couldn't control. Afterwards, I may be able to bring it under control. I've seen it many times in uh, advanced spiritual seekers also. How is it that I can control at that moment also? That is um, a form of austerity is required. The spiritual practice. What are the practices? I've told. I will repeat again. Third reason is they call it avisamvada. Avisamvada means confusion. I have understood everything, but next lecture I listen to, I get confused. I understood Vedanta, but then I went to this other lecture. And then everything became. Schopenhauer said, the sign of a weak mind, a weak mind is like a pillow, which retains the impression of the last bottom which sat on it. So it's like the last book you have read, or the last lecture you have read, that becomes great. No, no, no. Avisambhada. When Sadhu put it very beautifully, in Hindi, the Uttarakhand Sadhu says, Dhyan laga ke dekh lo vastu kaisa hai. Once you sit quietly in the morning and see what am I? This one unlimited awareness shining forth. And then go forth. Nobody can confuse you. One sadhu I heard again in Hindi he would say, see what happens in confusion is person know, has, knows about milk. Never seen milk or drunk milk but knows about milk. Then somebody tells him, Do you know about milk? Yeah, I know it's white. And then the other person says, yeah, 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 you are not wrong, it is white, but only when it comes from white cows. When it comes from red cows, it is red, and from black cows, it is black. Now this person thinks, but I had read that milk is white, but what he says is logical. So perhaps what I read was incomplete, more information I've got now, or all right, so I have this multicolored milks. No, if you have seen what milk is and you know for sure, doesn't matter what logic anybody else gives. A red cow, red milk, sounds logical. White cow, black cow, black milk. Hmm. One little kid, it's a true story. Children also have interviews for kindergarten and all. More, somebody said more a test of for the parents than for the children. Tension is for the parents, not for the kids. So one little kid was interviewed for um, like a primary school. And the psychologist, school psychologist, looked at a little boy and said, 
how is it that a white cow uh, that a uh, the red cow eating green grass gives white milk and the kid immediately smartly replied why are you asking me ask the cow <laughs> i hope he was selected.